Hello everyone, welcome to Keystone Tech Talk videos. We're going to be putting together a series of videos that address some common questions that we see from the design and construction side of Keystone retaining walls. We hope you find them useful. Um, we're also looking for ideas that you out there in the world may have and uh, some things that you'd like Keystone to possibly do some videos on for. So please leave your comments and uh, ideas at the comments section of our uh, Facebook and LinkedIn pages and we'll post those videos as soon as we're able to do them. Uh, we hope you find them useful and um, we look forward to seeing you all very soon. Welcome to our first Keystone Tech Talk video helping you work through your Keystone design and construction details. One of the first ones that we'll be talking about is fence and barrier details and specifically guide rails. These are two of the most common questions that we receive uh, through Keystone Engineering. Uh, you know, where can I place these items in relation to my Keystone wall? First off, we'll talk about pedestrian railings. This first railing detail is an offset railing detail, approximately three foot from the wall face. This would be if you're not supporting something directly behind the wall, typically like a, a sidewalk or a driveway, parking lot. Um, you know, where it requires a, a little bit more um, defined space usage. This would be so, sort of if you're supporting a green area, a hillside, something like that. And it's fairly common, easy to install. <clears throat> Typically, your wall installer does not have to be involved with uh, installing the fence. It might be a separate installer. It makes it easy for them to sort of either drive the railing into the ground behind the wall or um, even utilizing some type of sleeve during construction. Second would be the most common you'll see on a lot of commercial applications is because the land is at a premium. Um, the, the developers want to have the railing as close to the fence as possible, or it might be a municipal code that requires the fence to be as close to the wall as possible. You'll notice that this is a uh, top-down view on the bottom left there of the sleeve directly being placed behind the unit. Um, the depth of the sleeve will pass through a minimum of two geogrid layers and these this is to help support the fence post foundation and to mitigate any design concerns. You know typically we have to design the fence system in the wall to withstand a minimum 50 pound per lineal foot load and that's per IBC code. The, the, the Installers that typically do these understand how to install the sleeve through the wall system. So they actually cut a small slit in the geogrid and pull it back and slide the geogrid over the top of the sleeve. So this is more of a, a more enhanced application, but one of the most common types of uh, fence post installations that you will see. One of the most common questions we receive is, can I put my fence directly through a keystone unit? And unfortunately, it is not an application that will work due to the calculation necessary to satisfy IBC code. Um, the, the, the units themselves do not have enough mass to resist that load and it would involve a more complicated design such as integrating some rebar, horizontal rebar, and some vertical rebar throughout the wall system facing, which is often cost prohibitive and time consuming. So this is about as close as uh, application as you can get unless you're using a sidewalk, which we'll talk about next. It makes it a little bit easier to get the fences closer to the back of the wall when integrating a, a sidewalk. And we have two details here we're going to talk about. We have a fence where it abuts the back of the unit, so you can still use a cap unit when it's a retaining wall. You're utilizing a thickened edge behind the wall facing system itself, and you'll want to make sure you'll note that there's an expansion material behind the back of the units. This is to separate the two details, or the two uh, items from each other, right? So they can act independently. There's no post depth minimum outside the two foot and you'll gather one layer of geogrid in that and the fence post can be driven through that. Now this would be prohibitive for your say wood style fence posts. This is more for your metal railing uh, fences, <clears throat> things of that nature. Um, but a very easy detail to integrate with uh, within the Keystone wall systems. Or you could possibly actually install uh, a thickened edge over the top of a uh, existing keystone retaining wall unit, right? And you place the fence post right at the wall facing, but it's the work is being done by the actual integrated concrete slab. 
you'll notice there, there are two separate things that are important in this type of detail. Number one, you have the one inch styrofoam bond breaker material between the concrete and the keystone unit. And then secondly, you're going to, a contractor would actually install an expansion joint to separate um, sort of the wall movement from the sidewalk movement, right? You're going to want to have that expansion material so those two items can act independently of each other. This can also be done with uh, taller walls, geogrid walls. We're showing a gravity wall in this particular application. And then finally, we have a guide rail details. Now, guide rails are probably the, the most economical option for vehicular barrier systems out there. Um, these are governed by AASHTO uh, design codes, and they state that there must be a minimum of three foot from the wall face, and then also a minimum five foot deep into the ground. Now, typically, these are done also with sleeves. Um, the sleeve must pass through a, a minimum two geogrid layers and installed during wall construction. And then your guide rail contractor can come back and just actually co come back and concrete uh, the posts in place. You can do this without a sleeve if you have a steel H post guide rails as they can be driven directly through the reinforcement without uh, uh, dragging down the, the reinforcement with it, right? You don't ever want to auger these systems in place. What ends up happening is you end up tearing up those two uh, upper geogrid layers. And so the preferred methods are utilizing a sleeve or driving a fence post in. So that concludes this Tech Talk video. I hope you found it useful. Uh, please, again, please provide your comments and anything you'd like to talk about in the future in the comments below.